I swear to God, this is legit. I am not joking with you guys. You, you're pro you probably don't believe me. You probably don't believe me. But all I'm asking you guys to do today is just sit back and watch this video and listen to me. Because thank Timo. Honestly, it's better than full AP Timo. Like, honestly, thank Timo is better. I'll tell you why during the gameplay. Now I'm just going to quickly explain to you guys how to build it. And I'll explain the point of the build, really. So let's get to it. You start with a Rift Maker. Not a Nasher's Tooth. Not a Leandris. Hell, you don't even build Nasher's Tooth. Or Leandris. You only build a Rift Maker. Why? This is the only AP item you're going to build. Let me explain to you why. Because if you actually look at the passive, when you're in combat with champions, you get the corruption stack, right? And after 3 seconds, you're going to do 9% bonus damage. And this 9% is going to be true damage. This is The bonus damage from this is going to be true damage. And this one is going to be true damage. So, you're going to do a lot of true damage as well. Your ultimate is going to explode on the enemy's faces. And the beauty, you know what the beauty really is of this build? You become extremely tanky. Like, you're very slippery. Enemies can't really catch you because the twin guard gives you the bonus armor magic resist. But also the tenacity. The tenacity makes it even better. You can also blind enemies. So even, for example, if a Rengar jumps on you, he's never going to kill you. Literally never. Because you're already so tanky. And you're going to blind him. So he's literally never ever going to kill you. That's the true beauty of this build. So like you start with a Rift Maker, then you go for the Searing Crown. This item is so good on Teemo, by the way. Then you go for the Amaran Twin Guard. And here it's situational. Um, there's multiple things you can go for. I mean, you can go for damage if you really want to. Like, you could go for a Leander's, but I recommend the Mantle of 12th Tower. Because, yet again, it gives you more armor and more magic resist. And when you get to a low amount of HP, you get the bonus HP and the slow resistance, right? And the bonus movement speed, which allows you to run away even easier. Really really good build and like even basic attacking the enemy really hurts them and to put the cherry on top some far edges is your last item normally this is always going to be like your first item or something but in this particular build like if you reach the final item go for the sunfire edges and you're going to do even more damage you're just going to burn the enemies all over the place it's, it's absolutely crazy you have a ma you have quite a lot of hp and you have an absolute massive amount of resistances because as i said searing crown gives you 50 armor this gives you 55 armor, 55 magic resist. This gives you 50 armor and 50 magic resist. And then the armor on Twingard gives you under 30% armor and 30% magic resist. Now for the boots, you can go for like Ionic Boots of Lucidity. Or you can go for like the Glutinous Gifts. Glutinous Gifts are also not bad. Or of course you can go for Mercury Threads and play the two cards. You can go for any boots really. And for the enchantments, you go for Stone Plate of course. So you want to have the Stone Plate, right? Like you want to be tanky. Here you go for Grasp of the Undying. You don't go for Electrocute anymore or Airy or anything. You go for Grasp of the Undying because you're getting HP now instead of um, instead of uh, AP. This is actually going to make you a little bit stronger in your lane as well. Especially stronger than late game. But early game, you can actually trade pretty well with the Grasp of the Undying because you're going to be healing up all the time. Here it's situational, but of course in the current meta, naturally Giant Slayer is going to be really good because there's a lot of tanks. But if there's not a lot of tanks in your enemy, you could go for something like the Triumph. Triumph is always going to be good on Teemo. Or you could get weakness if you want to support your team just a little bit more. Here, it's also situational. If you feel like you have an easy lane, you can get conditioning to become even tankier in the late game. Um, otherwise, if you have a really rough lane, you could go for bone plating. But I like really try to go for conditioning because you want to be as tanky as possible. And then here you go for sweet tooth just to make sure you're fine in your lane. Because you, you're going to have late game runes. So you're not going to be as powerful in the early game. And you're not going to go Nasher's tooth. You're going for Rift Maker, which is a little bit of a weaker item in the early game. So you, you kind of want to save yourself with the Sweet Tooth. And for the spells, you go for Ignite and Flash. So I would say enough about the build. And let's get into the gameplay. Um, uh, what can I say? What can I say? While I'm walking towards my lane as a Teemo, I want to say that I'm doing a skin giveaway this month. All you have to do to enter is put down a comment under this video. I'm giving away three skins this whole month. So I'm going to be picking three random comments this month. And I want to make a new like goal as well, because as long as you guys keep liking the videos, I'll just make the videos, you know, when I can. Actually, you know what? I, I was going to make the like goal like a thousand likes for AP Varus, but honestly, I don't want to rush it. I am playing him a lot. It's not like if you like this video a lot that I'm going to play him more, because I am really already, already playing a lot. Which champion should I do then? I have a goal for. Hmm. You know what? 
Just give this video a thousand likes and I'll do something. I don't even know what. Just, just do it. But take a look at how I'm trading with this Garen, by the way. Should be a kill. Boom, boom, boom. Easy peasy kill. When you have Grasp of the Undying, it's completely different. People don't really understand how to play against Teemo when you have a Grasp of the Undying. Because they don't really expect you to heal up. Because Grasp is going to heal you up, right? Like You have to just know how to play around it. Hit a minion once. And you can wait for a long time before you hit the enemy champion. Because remember, Teemo does burning damage. Every basic attack burns the minions for a few seconds as well. Which is constantly going to be refreshing the grass of the Undying. And it, it gives you a lot of time to proc it on the enemy. Essentially, what it means is the enemy can never get close to you. And you don't have to constantly hit the minions to keep up the grass of the Undying proc. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to booty Garen. Basic attack first ability and run out. Because I can. I have to be careful of his first ability though. Um, like I can trade with him very easily because I can just stop his first ability by using my first ability because I blind him. Here you can see I'm fearless. Like even though he can hit my first ability, I am quite fearless because I still have my sweet tooth and I should be fine. Like I, I, I'm just kind of testing grounds here to be honest. I'm kind of testing grounds. Here of course I'm going to freeze the wave and I can bully him even more. If he comes close, oh he's rotating now. I can I mean, this is rough. This is going to be a rough one because I'm not that strong right now. So I actually decided to just leave them alone because I really am not that strong right now. So I'm not going to try to bother rotating right now. I'm just freezing my wave, making the Garen lose like three waves. Like this is totally worth it. He's losing so much from it. here. Boom, boom. You can see I'm trying to trade with him as well. He almost took a turret shot. And I ignited him, but... Done! They're so low. I'm just very quickly pushing this lane so I can get some farm before I go back. If Garen goes on me. <gasps> surely, surely, surely. Oh, oh, that was way too close. He still had his stupid ignite, but I killed him. I killed him, baby. Actually, it seems like this game I went for Soaring Crown first item. So, interesting. Actually, that makes more sense than the Rift Maker first, because this is actually a strong early game item. Soaring Crown is a really, really strong early game item. Um, and then after that, I'm likely going to be building the Rift Maker. So with the Soaring Crown, I should be able to outtrade the Garen very easily, because I'm going to burn his HP, because um, it burns 1.6% of his HP, and it refreshes as well. Like, remember, this is what makes it a beautiful item on Teemo. This is why Leandris, for example, is really good on Teemo. But the same goes for Soaring Crown. It's kind of the same as Leandris, but the tank type of item. Like, look, I hit him once, and the sword, if I have Soaring Crown, it's constantly going to be refreshed. Look at the Grasp of the Undying, by the way, as well. You see? Like, I actually want you guys to pay attention to it. Just let, let's take a look. Okay. I hit him. Look at it. It refreshes. Look, look, look. Wait. Uh, I, I was hitting the minion here, so that's why. But I actually want to show you a good example here. He should be dead here, actually. Wait. I want to give you guys, I want to make you guys understand why Grasp is so good on Teemo, uh, especially when you play him as a tank. Like, you really only have to hit the enemy once, and I want you guys to put your eyes on, okay, so now, wait, okay, put your eyes on it. Look, it refreshes, it refreshes, it refreshes, it keeps refreshing until the burning runs out, which means, like, a normal champion, a normal champion generally has to hit an enemy twice for him to be able to fully stack Grasp. Teemo only has to do it once, because this attack burns the enemy, as I said. And you have a lot more time to actually utilize the grasp, because you're burning the enemy, right? Like, that's the whole point of it. And that's why it's actually a really, really good rune to go for on Teemo, if you know how to use it properly. Now, as you can see, I got the Soaring Crown, I'm going to get Boots, and now I'm going to get the Rift Maker, because I want to turn my Soaring Crown uh, damage into true damage, right? I could actually rotate to bot lane here and just get a free kill. As you can see, a lot of them are low, so I'm just going to use my Boots, probably my second ability, third ability. Hmm. Small tip, by the way, for your third ability. Let's take a look at what happens here first. I flash, I just kill Thresh. But let me give you a small tip for your third ability. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys didn't know this, but let me tell you what it is. When you use your third ability and you walk, it doesn't, so it takes, how do I explain this? The way that it discharges, like let's say you turn on your third ability and you start walking. You can see that the thing goes off, right? Like and when it turns off, your third ability is going to be gone. You're not going to be invisible anymore. This is not based on distance. 
this is based on time traveled. What it means, what I'm trying to say is if you, for example, if you are slowed by a lot and you use your third ability and you only walk a little bit of a distance, but it takes you like three seconds to walk that distance, it's going to take away a big part of your third ability. By the way, look at how I'm ganking this lane here, by the way. I was staying invisible and they fell for my bait and now both of them are going to die. Boom, boom, boom. But yes, what I was talking about is if you take three seconds to walk while you're super slowed, you're only going to be able to walk a small distance, but it's going to take away all of the charge of your third ability. But if you're really fast, you can also take three seconds to run, but then you can run much further while being invisible. And it's going to take the exact same charge from your third ability as the one when you were slowed. So what it means is you really want to try to be fast. Like, look, like this. You see, I use my second ability during my third ability so I can catch him very easily and be as fast as I can instead of just using my third ability. Because it's not based on distance. It's based on time. I want you guys to understand that. I can take the heal here. Look, I'm just constantly proking the grass with the undying on him. And I, I, like, he's not even, he's not able to kill me. He's not, he's actually just straight up not even able to kill me. He's gonna die. Yep, there you go. Like, I'm not even that tanky yet. You, you have to see what the hell happens in the late game. And you can clearly see I'm actually doing good damage too. Like, I'm actually really doing a lot of damage this game too. It's not like I'm just tanky. These new tank items give you damage as well, which is the beauty of them. And it makes it perfectly synergized with someone like Teemo. The only, the only thing is, though, you're very slow at pushing turrets. But, I mean, come on. You can't have everything, right? Like, you, you can't have everything. Like, here you can see, I'm very slow at pushing the turret. But, hey, at least I am getting the turret. So, it's fine. It's fine. And now I'm going to go back. I could push another wave, but Garen is here. I have to be a little bit careful. I'm healing up because I have Riftmaker, by the way. Look, I'm not even afraid of the Garen, you see? Look, Grasp of the... Oh, now I should be afraid, though. Because his ult... Okay. Flash away from him and run away. And he's dead. He can't kill me. I am too tanky. He, he just can't kill me. He, he tried desperately to kill me, but I just calculated it perfectly. I didn't flash in the beginning because I knew his ult wouldn't kill me off. Because I have a lot of HP. Right? Like, that's the whole thing. I have a lot of HP. So after he ulted me, I waited for him to go under the turret and then I flashed at the perfect moment to bait him just enough to take all the turret shots and die. Look, now, third ability, second ability, you see? It makes me extremely fast and it allows me to get very close to the enemy and look, boom, you see? I would not have been able to get as close to them if I didn't do it like that, if I didn't, um, if I didn't use my second ability. Another tip for Teemo, by the way, all you have to do to, to fully stack the Rift Maker is either hit an enemy with your mushroom or just basic attack an enemy. You literally, all you have to do is basic attack an enemy. And after three seconds, you're going to do the through them. Or your first ability. Like, look, boom, boom, boom. Because you're burning the enemy with the soaring crown now. You're going to stack up the Rift Maker already. And now I'm already going to do true damage, you see? It's so easy to just do so much damage. And now look, my ultimate exploded on the Lily as well. Just doing a lot of damage. I'm constantly throwing down ultimates here, by the way. And they're walking into them. It's doing a decent amount of damage too. And it's giving... And it's slowing the enemies too. So it's really, really nice. Thresh? Oh, Thresh is 1 HP. Wow. I should have killed him here. I'm trying to look for Thresher. As you can see, I'm using maximum movement speed. <gasps> oh, no. I knew he was backporting. You could see it. And then I went for him immediately. But it was just... Oh, no. Oh, same story for Amaron Twingarn, by the way. You're constantly refreshing your burns. So you're going to have the Amaran Twingard for longer. You're going to have a longer lean, lean way. Is that what they say in English? Like you're going to have a longer period of time where you don't have to engage in combat, but you're still going to have the bonus on Amaran Twingard. It's just, it's just all in all good. Let me say to you, it's just everything is good about it. I'm going to try to fight the Lilia here. Lilia is going to be a bit annoying because she does a lot of true damage, but I saw my teammate coming. So that's why I took the fight. Like I, I, I baited her. I knew I wasn't going to able to win the 1v1. Because Lilia is actually really good into tanks. Um, she's, she's really, really nice into tanks. She does a lot of true damage. And she's really good into tanks. So I didn't want to mess too much with her. I only was fighting her because my team was there. Here you can see Eric's second ability. Just flanking them from the side. I don't have a lot of HP now. And I'm not that tanky right now. But here you can see. I'm, I survived a Yasuo engage like that. I got hooked by the Thresh. And I survived Yasuo because I'm tanky. But you haven't even seen half of it yet. Because we I, I haven't even finished my Amaranth Twain card yet. I haven't gotten all my tank items yet. 
you'll see, like, basically, if you play this build, people are going to be so surprised at how tanky you are. Like, they're, they, you know, normally when someone goes on a Teemo, they're essentially going to be able to one-shot the Teemo. So you have to be extremely careful of your positioning, right? But it completely changes when you play it with this build. You also have to change your, uh, uh, your attitude when you play with this build because you have to understand that, hey, you can actually tank up damage now. You don't have to play it safe. You can get in the middle of the fight, soak up all the damage, and you'll be fine. Because you're a tank. You have a, you have a lot of tank damage. They actually walked into my trap. So I stacked up my Rift Maker, as you can see. They walked into my trap. It's pretty funny. Two of my teammates died somehow. I don't really know why they fought for no reason, but I guess it's fine. Now I'm fighting from overall. Look at that ultimate baby. And I'm fighting from the side. I mean, of course, if I don't have to take damage, I won't do it. But here you can see, I should not be afraid, to be honest. I should really just step up and fight. Like, I should just step up and fight this Yasuo, for example. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Yep, there we go. Look, look, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. Normally, normally you would die. Guaranteed, this would be death, right? Like, normally, this is guaranteed death. Look at how many shots I took from him. But I actually ended up killing him. I straight up 1v1 the Yasuo right there. And even his ultimate, like, he, his ultimate wasn't even able to kill me. It's absolutely ridiculous. Like, it's absolutely ridiculous. And also remember, you can dodge around stuff with Teemo's second ability too. I dodged one of his tornadoes, and you need to utilize this during a team fight as well. Because not only do you get a lot of movement speed after the second ability, the second ability itself is also a small dash, which can allow you to dodge things like you know, Yone Tornado, Yasuo Tornado, Oriana's Balls, and things like that, Corky's abilities. You can dodge a lot of these projectile abilities. So use it. Use it in a team fight as well to be able to juke around the enemies a lot and have an actual dash as well. Like, you have all of that. And also my mushrooms. I need to try to get them in their jungle just for the vision of it, to be honest. Like, to get a ward. Of course, gonna go on the Garen right here to annoy him and just bully him. I mean, at this point, I'm just bullying him. I'm just being annoying. Look at that. Look, look, just, just bullying him. He, he can't even get close. Because he doesn't want to take that damage. Because he, he will actually take a lot of damage from me. Look, bully, bully, bully. We bully them. And then Lilia walks into my traps as well. Constantly getting burned. Look, now I have the armor on Twin Guard as well, by the way. So I'm even tankier. Let's see what happens. I could flank the Oriana, try to kill her. If she gets close to me, basic attack first ability ignite and she's dead. Let's see what happens. She didn't get close to me, so instead I actually just went on the thrash. Yet again, look, I tanked three enemies. Three enemies were on top of me. Look, look. Look. Look at how tanky I am. I tanked that for so long. They all took so much damage before they finally finished me off. It's crazy. I was overextended, but you can see, like, I was tanking up their damage like an absolute giga chat right there. Oof. What am I going to build now? The Mantle of 12th Hour. And this... Basically, this item, in case you get super low, which is unlikely to happen, um, you're going to get the healing as well. And the movement speed and the um, uh, slow resist. That's what it's called. And the slowing resistance. So you'll have it all. You have tenacity, armor, magic resist, slow resistance, movement speed, everything. And you're hella tanky, right? Like, you have it all at that point. So even when you get to a low amount of HP, that item is going to allow you to run away pretty easily. Because yeah, you're also going to have a lot of tenacity from the Amaranth Twin Guard. Essentially, you can just run away super easily. It's really, really powerful. Minion. I want to shove this wave fast and help them at the Baron. Because I don't want to leave alone my team. It's not a good idea to leave them alone at this stage of the game. So I'm coming to them. As you can see, oh, they're actually fighting without me. It's really not an amazing idea. Let's help him out. Blind the Yasuo. Yeah, and we're doing we're doing fine here. We did fine. Wait, can we end the game? No. No, it's you know what? We can't end the game because it's an Oriana that's alive. Oriana's one of those champions that can actually defend because she can shove waves so easily with her balls. So we actually need to go for the Baron. Normally you could just kind of shove the wave and end the game, I would say. Oh, unfortunately, I wasn't fast enough at the Baron. And now the Jarvan doesn't have enough HP. I should have actually seen that. But it's fine. Instead, I'm just going to clear out wards in their jungle and put my own, my own toxic little wards in their jungle. 
and try to steal away their uh, their red buff as well. Look at how much vision we have in their jungle now, by the way, because of my stupid mushrooms. Yeah, it also takes a while to take enemy jungle, by the way. You're, you're really not that fast at taking jungle. But of course, yeah, of course there are some sacrifices, right? Like you can't, as I said, you cannot have everything. So I'm just trying to take this red buff. Oh my god, he took it. Look, look at my tankiness. Look, look, I, I, just, got, I just want you guys to look at this. Look. Look at how much damage I'm taking for Garen, from Garen. Look. Look, look. Nothing. Nothing. I'm taking nothing. I'm taking absolutely nothing from him. And I'm going to burn him. Over time, I'm going to kill him because I'm burning him. Look. Boom. Boom. He actually flashes away. So that's fine for me. I can get the mantle of the 12th hour. And that item is such a beauty. So let's go back, buy the item, and become even tankier than before. I actually don't remember what happened right now. Like, how, how crazy is the tanking is really going to be? Because after this, I was probably going to go for Sunfire Ages or Leandris. So like, you can go for both of them. But I love Sunfire Ages because, as I said, it's going to give you even more burning and even more tankiness. So let's see. I'm going to enter this fight right here. Oof, Nautilus died. That's not good. I want to flank someone, like get a free kill. Okay, Yasuo goes on my Corky. Of course, I blind the Yasuo. And we win the fight, as you can see. Yet again, surprising the enemy like that. I'm going to tank the turret, of course. Look at how little turret damage I'm taking. Look. I can even use stone plate. All nice and chill. All nice and easy. Soaking up everything. I haven't even used the mantle of the 12th hour yet, by the way. Orianna is a little bit annoying though, because Orianna actually does a lot of damage. This is a champion that can definitely deal with tanks in the later stages of the game. So I was just respecting the Orianna. You can see Wave Clear is also utter garbage with this build. It's horrible, horrible Wave Clear. Absolutely horrible, actually. It's just really, really bad. What can I say? You know, uh, again, you can't have everything, right? Getting the Bami Sin there as well, just even more burning. <clears throat> Oh man, well, what was I thinking when I was building this, by the way? What was I even thinking? Like, hmm, tank Teemo may be a good idea, right? Hmm, what the hell? Who even, how, how could I even possibly come up with tank Teemo? What the hell, man? I've honestly never, I haven't seen anyone do this yet. But I like to do all of these new things, as you guys may know. Someone walked into my trap, by the way, because the Riftmaker uh, stacked up. And the Twin Guard, as you can see. All of those things stack up when, when someone just walks into one of your traps. And yeah, at this point, we're ahead enough for them to just win that fight. Corky is very, very strong right now. I'm going to try to flank them, though, just to, to finish, finish them off. As you can see, third ability, second ability. Basic attack, first ability, ignite. Look, I'm tanking the turret. Look, I am tanking. I don't care about tanking the turret. Look, 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 look. Timo is taking the turret, baby. Garen is... I don't even know what to get. Garen gave up. Garen just kind of gave up. And it's going to be game over. You also have a lot of mushrooms with this build. Because your items give you a lot of... Um, well, not a lot. But a decent amount of tenacity. So you also have a decent amount of armor. A uh, decent amount of... Ability haste. That's what I want to say. Ability haste. Your items give you a lot of ability haste. So let's take a look at how much damage I did and everything like that. I soaked up a lot of damage. But I also wonder how much damage I actually did. So let's take a look. Yeah, I did 34,500 damage. I only did 8,000 less damage than, like, this Corky. What the hell is that Corky build, by the way? Like, uh, that's a pretty funny Corky build as well. So, thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed this video. and I will see you all in the next Lord of video. Bye-bye.